Hello there, this is Dr. Brian Buchanan. I'm a intensive care physician at the University of Alberta Hospital. I want to welcome you to this tutorial. Today I'm going to be with you as I walk you through the process of, of central line insertion. So I'll be in the room with you and I'll provide you some some step-by-step -step guidance in the insertion of a central line. So here you are, you are, you are preparing this sheath, making sure there's gel on the inside and reducing any air in the gel sheath interface. Place some elastic bands over the probe itself to make sure it's nice and snug and the sheath does not slip, therefore contaminating your sterile surface area. You've done it nicely here. Put it in a secure place to prevent it slipping off. Now be sure to verify your anatomy. The site insertion will be at the apex of the triangle of the sternocleidomastoid, where the sternal head crosses the clavicular head of the SCM muscle. And it's this apex you should landmark in advance of applying the probe. So here, make sure you verify your anatomy. Generally speaking, the carotid will be medial and the IJ will be lateral. The IJ is usually highly compressible, there may be some pulsatility if in close proximity to the carotid. Make sure your orientation screen marker is positioned correctly to cor correspond to the patient anatomy. Again, verify this with patient direct external anatomical landmarks. You may also see a clot at this point, which is defined by a non-compressible vein. In this case, you should not proceed with cannulation if you suspect that there is a clot. I see you will next use your ultrasound to help guide local anesthetic injection slash infiltration to anesthetize the skin. You may want to anesthetize a broad area, acknowledging there may be a small incision with dilation and subsequent suturing of the cannula to the skin once the procedure is complete. You may notice some small distortion here of the skin as the local anesthetic is injected. And you want to get allow some time to pass for the skin to actually be properly anesthetized. Next, prepare your introducer needle. Make sure the needle and the syringe are not connected tightly. Once you're satisfied, identify the IJ and place the IJ in the middle of the screen. This will mean when your needle enters at the middle of the probe that you are well lined up. Again, being sure the marker here is correct for orientation. As you enter at about 45 degrees, you'll be simultaneously pushing and aspirating with the needle to make sure that you don't pass into a vessel unbeknownst to you. You will use the creep technique here to make sure that your probe is in advance of the needle tip. Make sure here that the ultrasound probe is in advance of the needle tip. And I see that you are also aspirating here to make sure that you, you detect a venous flash. Once that's detected, you, you, I see you've already dropped the probe, secured the needle, you will now introduce the wire. That wire should pass pretty smoothly with minimal resistance. If you encounter resistance, you should stop and withdraw the needle. That wire should have a, should have a J hook on the end that prevents any vascular perforation. I notice you are placing your finger on the end of that needle. That prevents any air entrainment and air, air embolism. Once the wire is passed in, past the two bar mark on the wire, that should be sufficient. There should be a small 
about five to seven centimeter segment of wire that's sticking out of the opposing end of a needle. That way you can safely thread off that needle. Great job there. I see here you are now verifying the wire. That is a really great way to make sure that once that wire is in place, it follows typical anatomy and trajectory of the IJ. You can follow that wire all the way down to the brachiocephalic trunk as you fan the ultrasound probe over the clavicle. Next, here you're making a small incision. Be aware, if your incision is too small, you may have difficulties and experience resistance with putting the dilator in. So that blade, make sure it's facing outwards, to not nick the wire. And that small incision should be usually about half a centimeter or so. This incision may need to be extended, again, if you experience resistance with the introducer. I noticed here that you're doing a really great job at controlling that wire. That way you prevent losing the wire at any time. Because you've verified placement with ultrasound of the wire, I'm satisfied with you putting in the introducer dilator. This will go in occasionally with some resistance. And you may have to apply sustained pressure and maybe even some corkscrew type motions to make sure it passes smoothly. You should also know that that wire doesn't have to, does, that, that dilator doesn't have to go all the way in, just enough to dilate the track from the skin to the vessel. But I noticed that you're having some difficulties here with that incision. Again, this is a very common mistake to happen with, under, with approaching a central line, is how big that this area should be, this incision should be. I see you, will, you are further extending that incision. Again, this is a very common uh, mistake to make when inserting a central line, is knowing how big the incision should be. After taking the dilator off, you will now advance the central venous catheter over the wire. Again, being mindful that you have control of the wire at all times. So this wire should be held at the skin level and advanced over the catheter. Once you have a few centimeters sticking out of the opposing end of the catheter, then you can secure the, the wire on one side while the other hand advances the catheter. Never let go of the wire. And I like how you're, that one hand is remaining fixed in place, holding the wire. Now you can grab the sheath, which can help you put that wire back in place, as it's a bit unwieldy at times to put over your surgical field. Be careful this step, as if the patient moves, they may become, may become decannulated from the central venous catheter. So make sure at all times that you have your hand on the patient on your central venous catheter. That way you do not have accidental decannulation. Now you will flush each site. You can empty a couple mils of fluid out of each syringe. That way you can aspirate any air that's in the line. And hold the syringe upwards. That way you're injecting only saline. Once you've flushed each line, you can then lock them. Be sure to, to keep a mental record of getting successful venous flash from each port. That way you can report this to the nurse. Once you've flushed each line, you can then secure the central line to the patient's skin on either side of the device. Again, be mindful that you've infiltrated a large enough area that this process should be relatively painless.